More than 150 scientists and technicians at Metro Vancouver work to protect human health and the environment. With over 25% of the region's land mass under Metro Vancouver's stewardship, deploying the latest scientific advances is essential to protect these sensitive ecosystems. Most visitors to Lynn Headwaters Regional Park walk right past this tiny creek. But to Regional Park staff, it's not just a creek. It's a treasure trove of biological data called eDNA. eDNA is short for environmental DNA. It's the DNA that comes off the skin cells and other bodily fluids of animals that hang out in aquatic ecosystems. Water samples are gathered from creeks for lab analysis. Robin Worcester and her colleagues are looking for evidence for amphibian species that are considered at risk, the coastal-tailed frog and the red-legged frog. The team must follow strict scientific protocol for gathering the water samples. This way of doing species detection has many advantages. It's much less invasive than traditional methods such as catching and trapping animals, which is specifically important for the species at risk. This creek happens to contain visual evidence of one of the species the regional park staff is testing for. Cool. There's a tail frog tadpole. Oh, amazing. Yeah, he's just under that rock. See, he has a little suck face, so you can suck onto the rocks and hold on in the stream. So we should be able to find DNA if this tadpole's in the stream. It's a good chance that we're actually going to find something. Keeping the water samples cold helps prevent the eDNA from degrading. Even so, filtering the samples has to be done as soon as possible. At the University of Victoria, a biochemistry lab does the highly specialized detective work of analyzing the water samples. eDNA tests are capable of detecting a single molecule within a sample. It's like CSI for wildlife. The lab report confirmed the presence of both red-legged and tailed frogs in Lynn Headwaters Regional Park, so staff will now use that information to help protect the amphibians. The Metro Vancouver team continually fine-tunes and updates its technology to better care for the environment and to protect human health. In Burrard Inlet, biologists are gathering seafloor sediment samples for Metro Vancouver's marine monitoring program. The program tracks the impact of the Lionsgate and Iona Island wastewater treatment plants. They're using a special grabbing device called a Van Veen sampler. The sampler collects sediment from the bottom of the inlet. Then the sediment samples are placed into totes and washed. Some of the samples are sent for lab testing and others are carefully examined on the boat. The team notes the number and diversity of organisms in each sample. Metro Vancouver also captures water samples in a set of metal tubes that are connected to sensors that can read physical conditions of the water, such as salinity, chemistry, and temperature. The tubes are lowered to the desired depth. Then the biologists press a trigger to close each tube's lid. The samples will be analyzed and other materials. At Metro Vancouver, innovation also impacts management of our drinking water. The largest reserve of water in our region is stored as snowpack. Metro Vancouver is developing a new way to measure it, updating an age-old tradition. Historically, the same locations have been measured at the same times of year for the last 85 years. And while it helps to provide an accurate reading of that particular spot, the field hydrologist does not know how much snow there is over the entire area of the watersheds. The team is trying out new technology to see what tools will work best for the environment. One tool being used is LiDAR, which involves projecting a laser beam from a plane to the ground. The laser bounces off surrounding objects, returning to the sensor. It's done once in summer, then again when snow is on the ground. To validate the accuracy of the new LiDAR data, the field hydrologists are regularly comparing their manual measurements to what they are seeing from the aircrafts. 
High-end GPS technology is used to compare the manual measurement point to the LiDAR. Now, the snow measurements are more precise than the averages that have been used in past decades. Working with new tools will provide a better understanding of how much snow and water is available for the region. Planning for the future while adapting to the effects of climate change means the team is continually thinking of new ways to monitor and protect this vital resource. Metro Vancouver scientists are also investigating the impacts of climate change on even more remote areas of our region. About 40 kilometers north of Vancouver is a significant patch of ice. It's the Coquitlam Glacier, smaller than many other glaciers in British Columbia, but a valuable scientific tool nonetheless. That's why Metro Vancouver has been documenting it since 2006. Its melting rate, past, current, and projected, is a unique and powerful indicator of climate status here in the region. As well, the amounts of water melting can also provide important baseline data. In fall 2018, the Metro Vancouver team returned to the site with glacier specialist John Clegg with hopes of unlocking the glacier's secrets. One of their tasks was collecting wood from the valley below the glacier. They theorized a tree growing here was killed by the glacier during an advancing phase, when its front edge was in this location. Now, that glacier edge is about 700 meters further back. The two samples were sent for carbon dating. Carbon dating is a tool used to date past events. By dating the wood, it provides an indication of when the glacier was much more advanced than it is today. The first sample returned a date of 150 to 200 years back, telling the team that during that period of time, the glacier has receded roughly 4 meters a year. The second sample was collected in the same area, but apparently from a different tree. It was much, much older. Well, I just want to show you this. So here's the date here. Oh goodness. That's 2,490 years yeah. ago. They believe this second piece of wood is from a tree that became icebound elsewhere when the glacier was young. It would have traveled with the glacier's moving ice then, as it melted, was deposited here in the valley. This glacier is the last one in the Metro Vancouver region. It currently faces north and doesn't get a lot of sun. This orientation has allowed it to survive longer than others on the west coast. Metro Vancouver scientists and technicians are constantly improving our understanding of our region so we can make the best decisions possible for today and for the future. Music